Hello again, Kans here. I wanted to cover the Frostfang Berioth armor set. I know I'm a little bit late, but uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about the uh, the set, the set bonus, the skills that come with it, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so just to start with, and just to mention, I'm going to go over the meta sets in a bit, but uh, yeah, I'll show you how it looks. Uh, I mean, the headpiece on this one is just fantastic. Um, the hair on it looks amazing. But uh, yeah, that is the beta set, and this is the alpha set. Both of them look really good. Uh, and the skills themselves are... I guess I'll just quickly run through them. There you go, and now let's talk about each piece in more detail. So, Frost Fang Absolute Art. Punishing Draw, the one piece set bonus. Uh, you're probably aware by now, but this set takes a single piece and it gives you the uh, Frost Fang set bonus, which is Punishing Draw. This is the same as the regular Barrier set bonus, except you just get it in uh, one piece rather than two. As you can see, as a stun effect, two draw attacks and slightly increases attack power. The increase in attack power is 5 true roar on your unsheathing attacks and the stun effect varies from weapon to weapon but for greatsword uh, it's 30 and for some weapons uh, it's it's less than that. Now generally uh, for us Frank set will not be worth using unless you can actually get a KO from it. Your ability to do this will depend on your player skill uh, because KO is a status and so it depreciates over time and so you have to hit the head fairly frequently in order to keep it up. Um, so yeah, your ability to get a KO will depend on your player skill, it will depend on the monster that you're fighting, it'll depend on whether or not you're running points of slugger, a whole bunch of things. And if you're not going to get any KOs from, from running it, then obviously you're not getting any benefit out of it. Aside from the 5 true roar on unsheathing attacks, but you probably get more from just running more points of attack, for example. That said, if you can get a KO from it, so for example with an unsheathing attack from a greatsword, you can then leverage that into a, uh, a level sort of, what's the, I don't know what they call the strong charge and then the true charge. Uh, which between them is like going to be 2,500, maybe even more damage. And for monsters that have sort of 30,000 HP generally in the end game, less than that often, uh, you're doing basically 10% of a monster's health from that single opening, which is a lot more than you're going to get um, from a lot of other DPS skills. And to clarify, for example, in that example where you do 10% damage, uh, a monster will be left with 90% of its HP compared to what it would normally have uh, from that one opening that you gained through... Uh, to the KO, and so what that means is the monster basically has 90% of the health that it would normally have. The time it takes to actually do those hits is fairly negligible, uh, assuming you aren't losing DPS uh, trying to get the KO. Uh, and in that process, by having only 90% health, you're basically dividing your uh, your DPS by 0.9, which is timesing it by 10 over 9, which is roughly an 11% increase. And that's kind of how these how I come up with that damage calc number. Obviously, it will vary. You might be doing slightly less damage overall because you're doing more unsheathing attacks or, or whatever. Like it, it can vary. But, uh, but that's kind of the idea behind it. So yeah, it's uh, if you can get the opening and then take full advantage of it, depending on how much damage you get out of that opening, it will often be worth a lot more than uh, than running, for example, a few extra points of attack. And just to clarify, we have the three-piece set bonus, Slugger Secret, which unlocks Slugger. Um, unlocking Slugger will get you to uh, plus 60% at level 5, um, as an example. Not as useful as the previous set bonus, in my opinion. There are much better set bonuses that you get by running three pieces. Master's Touch, Safi set bonus for affinity and resentment, even if you're not using an elemental weapon, so on and so forth. But uh, it, it can be nice to have, especially on something like the hammer, for example, or for a matchup where you're already basically CCing something. But anyway, that's enough justifying these set bonuses. Let's actually talk about the parts themselves. As this becomes sort of fairly common practice for me now, I'm going to be largely comparing to Raging Brachidios, just because Raging Brachy has some of the best parts in the game in terms of uh, peace efficiency. So when I'm comparing actual skill efficiency on the pieces, I'll be comparing to Raging Bracky, but I do want to talk about the set bonuses as well. So the Al uh, beta headpiece is basically a side grade to Raging Bracky's headpiece, so it's it's up there with uh, some of the better headpieces of the game. Uh, the reason I say this is because you can see the Raging Bracky one is two four slots, a one slot, and a, and a weakness exploit. Whereas here we've got a four, a two, a one, and two crit eye. Two crit eye takes a four slot to get, whereas one weakness exploit takes a two slot to get. Um, and so these are actually equivalent to each other. If you if you just think about it in terms of slots and if you happen to need Critical Eye and Weakness Exploit, they're basically the same. Uh, if you only need one of these out of Weakness Exploit and Critical Eye, then obviously the one that has the relevant skill will be better for you. The Alpha piece isn't that good in my opinion. The extra point of Quick Sheath isn't worth dropping down from a 4 to a 3. Uh, the 3s can be nice. On a lot of sets, we're hurting for 3s. We can't get 3s, but we like things like Coalescence, so we end up having to burn a recovery skill or something like that on the... Uh, on the four slot to get coalescence alongside it so having a three point can be nice however to me getting quick sheath alongside that doesn't make enough of a difference for it to be worth using but if you really want quick sheath on your set then it can be slightly more efficient than the uh, beta headpiece which is already really good the beta chest piece is fantastic three points of attack boost a four slot and a two slot 
versus a four slot, a two slot, and a one slot, and two points of agitator. So you can imagine if you put attack boost into the one slot on Brachidium, you'd have two agi and one attack. Whereas here you have three attack. Those are essentially equivalent to each other. Even though agi takes two slots and attack takes one slots, they both have a four slot. So if you're playing optimally with meta stuff, then uh, then uh, they're just as difficult as each other to get. And so they're basically equivalent. So that makes the beta chest piece a side grade. And then when you look at the alpha chest piece, not only is beta a side grade to one of the best chest pieces in the game. However, you then gain critical draw on top of that in exchange for dropping a four slot from a three to a three slot. Uh, again, this is really nice for having things that coalescence on them. A lot of uh, end game sets are full of four slots, but don't have three slots. And so they end up burning a four slot on coalescence and like a health boost or something. And so then this way, you're basically swapping that health boost for a point of crit draw. Uh, and that is a really efficient trade-off in my opinion. However, obviously, if you're not using crit draw on your builds, then uh, it's not going to gain you anything, is it? So this is specifically for builds uh, where you want critical draw. And this uh, alpha chest boost becomes extremely efficient. Otherwise, the beta chest piece is still a side grade to Raging Brachian. It's still really, really, really good uh, value. The arm pieces are very similar. They are a side grade to Raging Brachian because, again, Agitator 2 and Critical Eye 2 are basically the same because they both just represent a single four slot. And the slots on the weapons are the same. Uh, however, the alpha arms are extremely efficient if you want Slugger. Just like there was the sort of consideration here, if you want Crit Draw with the chest piece, it's if you want Slugger. Now, I haven't really talked about this. Uh, I guess I'll talk about why that's efficient, by the way. Uh, two points of slugger and then two two slots is way better than uh, four four slots if you want the two points of slugger. But uh, yeah, depending on using slugger kind of varies based on your matchup and your aggressiveness. We talked about how it's very different from player to player and matchup to matchup whether you should even be using Frost Fang set bonus. There's a lot of factors that cause a difference. With slugger, the way to do it is to do your hunt. And if you, for example, if you finish the hunt just after getting your first KO, the extra 30% from two points of slugger isn't going to help you get a second one. However, if you get, for example, one KO and then you spend a long time hunting and the monster dies before a second KO, then those two points of slugger could be enough to get you over the edge for the second KO before it dies, which is a nice big opening, as we've talked about previously. So slugger, your usage is going to depend a lot on your own playstyle, how aggressive you are, how well you keep up KO damage and stop it from depreciating, all that stuff. And so really for you, I, I, I would advise that you test it out yourself. Generally speaking, though, I really like these arms. Um, two slots are often more important than four slots anyway. And by that, I mean, oftentimes we're burning four slots on things like 10 D health boost. So, uh, dropping them down to two slots mean you're actually only losing like a couple of points of health boost, which we usually already got three on and with plenty to spare. So, uh, yeah, in general, these arms, these alpha arms are really, really good, especially because you're always going to have KO damage on your sets if you're running a single piece. The waste isn't very skill efficient in my opinion. It's got some nice slots on it. Um, and you do get critical draw from the alpha piece. However, two, three slots aren't particularly useful unless you want like Coalescence and Handicraft. And even then, there, there are much better Frostfang pieces to be using on your set. If you're doing something like Frostcraft, um, the waste, swapping the uh, Relkana waste for this waste, isn't any going to be any better than swapping like uh, the chest for this chest or the, or the arms for these arms. Because they've all got basically the same garbage skills on them. Except here, you don't really get much uh, as a result from the swap. So yeah, the waste pieces are a little bit underwhelming in my opinion, although I may be wrong. Uh, the beta legs are similarly underwhelming in my opinion. Uh, if you compare them to the Brachy legs or like the uh, Garuga legs, for example, which are roughly equivalent. Um, what you've got here will cancel out the two four slots. And let's say we put a single point of attack boost in one of these one slots on Brachidium. Really what you're comparing is two points of weakness exploit and a one slot versus a four slot. And in my opinion, the two points of weakness exploit and a one slot are way, way, way more efficient. Uh, especially because you're not going to want to be running this many pieces of Frostfang anyway. Uh, the fact that the other pieces are so good in comparison to other pieces of armor means that uh, these legs are even less useful because you really don't need them in my opinion. The alpha legs are a little bit better. These three points of slugger in exchange for dropping some fours down to ones uh, are really good for sort of reasons explained previously. Uh, oftentimes you'll have like slugger health boost as one of your four slots if you wanted slugger anyway and so you're not really losing much by having the flexibility in the one slots and you are getting three points instead of two so it is quite uh, an increase in efficiency however three points of slugger is a little bit overkill and uh, given the fact that you can get two points of slugger with something like the arms which are way more way better value for money for your money in my opinion uh yeah again the legs are a little bit underwhelming although the alpha can be situationally better than the beta again if you need that many points of slugger to get an extra ko and so that, I think, covers basically everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, overall, the set's really good. Uh, there's some really good alpha pieces here as well, in my opinion. Uh, the chest and the arms especially. Um, the waist and the legs are a little bit underwhelming, although the alpha legs do pull it back a little bit, depending on how much slugger you want. 
But uh, yeah, overall, these are side grades with uh, some alpha pieces being situationally really, really good to fit on sets if you want Punishing Draw. Uh, I can't really give a TLDR for the Punishing Draw and Slugger Talks because they're a little bit complicated. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my thought on these armor sets. Uh, hopefully that helps you sort of uh, understand why I think what I think of them and maybe helps you make your own decision when it comes to set building. Uh, I guess the most important thing to remember though, and maybe the one thing I'd want you to take, take away from this, is god damn, look at that hair. Jeez, it looks so good. The Frostfang Barrieth Beta headpiece. There you go. If you're going to run one piece of armor in the game, it's got to be this one. <laughs> but hey, uh, yeah, good, good luck with your hunts and uh, happy set building. Take it easy. Bye bye.